Hi there, I'm Jim, the owner of Pure Wave Audio and the Studio Edge Pro Audio Recording Series with 40 years of commercial sound engineering and mastering experience, plus a bachelor's in electrical engineering. I am dedicated to empowering professional and inspiring recording engineers. Stay tuned and let me guide you through the exciting world of pro audio recording. Today we are talking about analog summing. I am sure everyone knows what analog summing is by now. You have a lot of outputs on your D to A conversion and sum all the channels together via an analog mixer of some sort and run it back into the DAW system in stereo. And that process bypasses the internal digital mix engine of the DAW system. Now most people are going to tell you that analog summing is to get that sound of color, but, but, but hold on a second. Let's back up. What they forgot to tell you is how this came about and why in the beginning of Pro Tools specifically, it was more of a necessity. And this information is the prelude to some of the philosophies that we'll talk about afterwards. Inside of your DAW software is the audio engine, the algorithms, if you will. And you get to choose what the bit depth is and what it operates at. Now back in the day, let's say Pro Tools 8 or earlier, the bit depth was fixed at a few decimals and not floating point. Well, what does that mean? Well, we're all familiar with the term pi, which is 3.14159266538972338327942819197159371510. You get the picture, right? Now, does 3.14 by itself equal the same number? Well, it's approximate, but it really is not actually the same number. You're missing a lot of digits. Now imagine all your channels of audio are adding up in the digital domain with only 3.14 when it's supposed to be the full version of Pi. That is what Pro Tools was doing back in the day. Therefore, after about 16 channels of audio, the mix would start to break down and not really represent what it would have been if it was in the analog domain or it had tens of decimal points behind it. Now, if you had a DAW system that did not have that low fixed point limitation, like Steinberg's Nuendo, that had floating point algorithms eight years before Pro Tools switched, you didn't need analog summing because the output was as intended. Now, here is where we start to go into what everyone else is saying about analog summing is essential to get the true maximum sound out of the individual audio files because the DAW can't do it internally. Whoa, 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 well, no. As we just learned back in the day, there were limitations specifically with Pro Tools, but DAWs today do not have those limitations. And you wanna make sure you go to your settings and set them up correctly. So if you're still recording at 44.1 kilohertz in 16 bit, you might want to consider 48 kilohertz and 32-bit float as your minimum and 96 kilohertz 32-bit float as a standard. And there are multiple reasons for this. Nyquist theorem, getting off the brick wall filter of your A to D, higher resolution, and all these are things you can learn about in detail with the Studio Edge Pro Audio Recording Series I created. Specifically Volume 1, Studio Concepts, Gear, and the Physics of Sound. Now, no one is sponsoring today's video. It is supported by those of you that have purchased my courses and purchased directly from Pure Wave Audio. Check the links in the description and thanks for all your support. Now, what does this all mean in the practical world? Well, if you buy a pristine summing box and you're also using Nuendo in 96 32 bit float and you are all about the pristine, no flavor, etc., you'll probably not hear a difference and you just introduced how good is your converter? How good is your cabling? It actually might sound worse going out of the box and coming back in. Now, one thing I have seen is major audio YouTubers using Ferrofish A32 Pros for all their hybrid gear. They're also using it for more outputs for summing. And the Ferrofish, which is a nice unit, is considered what I call broadcast slash industrial for a lack of a better word. It's not a high-end pro audio like Lynx, Merging, even Apogee, Burl. 
at that point, what they're doing is they're making functionality kind of trumping sound quality. Yeah, they're going to make up some sound quality because they're getting all that color and flavor, but they're losing the best of that sound quality through the A to D and D to A conversions. And not only the one conversion, but they're doing multiples and multiples and multiples of conversions over and over. And then make sure you're using the best cable possible, at least Megami Gold Cable. But if I was personally summing, I'd be putting all my stuff through Volvox cabling because it is superior to Megami Gold. And for those viewers across the pond, that would be Cordial. Volvox uses Megami Gold and Cordial cables as their comparisons at trade shows in the US and abroad. And believe me, they are able to show the difference. It's pretty obvious. There is no reason to spend all the money on D to A outputs if you're not using adequate cable. Now, if you're all about pushing signal hard into the transformers of the stereo bus via a mixer, summing mixer, then this is where it might come alive for you. And for the pristine others, they're probably wondering, why would you distort your pristine audio signal you just spent all this care, you know, putting into your recorder? Everyone has a different philosophy. And I'm pretty much on the pristine philosophy. I never want to hurt my audio, but that doesn't mean I'm not using distortion to do things. It's just I find what is appropriate at the right time. The other thing is that you could also use the summing boxes that have inserts built to them to get to your outboard gear in the signal path. Some are using a hybrid software setup where they have a virtual plugin that you put in that automatically links to the gear that's on the outboard. So in other words, you just pop a plug it in and it takes the round trip automatically, almost like a digital patch bay pre-configured. So you just pop that into your DAW system and now you're accessing your analog compressor, which makes it very convenient. Keep in mind there are functional pros and cons to all this. No more total recall, might be doing multiple passes to use certain pieces of gear a certain way because you only have one of them. The expense of adding high end A to D, D to A. The cost of sound not using good enough converters or cable. The amount of cabling cost. Not to forget the insert cabling. As an instructor that started my courses before YouTube was really a thing, I've told my students, do not buy gear because someone told you to buy it. Buy the gear after you've gained the knowledge to know you need it for your application and sound. And one of my students has just done this and bought a Rupert Neve Designs 5088 mixing console. He likes the pushing the transformer sound. And after mixing in the box, then an SPL iron on his mix bus, then a Rupert Neve Designs 5059 summing mixer, he worked his way up to this is the shit and <laughs> needed to take it to the ultimate level. And so he bought the 5088 console. And what's great about this is it allows me to give you one of the best 5088 install videos, which will be coming up soon on the channel, along with some summing shootouts with all the Rupert Neve gear, including the 5060 console, the 5059 summing mixer, and the 5088. You don't see that in other videos. So please subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Do not miss the exciting videos coming up. For more information on Boutique Gear, please go to purewaveaudio.com. And for expert education on the physics of sound, gear selection, building a studio, acoustics, and everything you ever want to know about selecting and recording a drum kit, check out thestudioedge.com. Thank you for your support and have a great day.